Hello and welcome to this IBM Cognos Analytics with Watson demo. My name is Will Branny and I'm a technical sales specialist. And my role is to really help customers maximize their investment in Cognos Analytics. In this short demo, we're going to focus on two of the five main capabilities of Cognos Analytics. We're going to start with dashboards for highly visual data discovery and the AI assistance. Then we're going to move to explorations to explore patterns in our data and unearth hidden insights. But as you know, Cognos is much more than this. And with the other capabilities, including stories, where you have the ability to bring together the story of your findings in this highly visual, engaging and dynamic way. We also have report authoring, which is the beating heart of any Cognos implementation, allowing you to create these pixel perfect reports with the powerful scheduling engine distributing these across the enterprise. And finally, we have data modules where we bring easy to use web based modeling capabilities to business users. So you can bring data sources together and cleanse and enrich them very quickly. And all these five capabilities are infused with AI delivered in this single browser interface, truly giving you all the answers in one place. So now let's move on to the demo. So in this demo, we're going to be stepping into the shoes of a product manager for the smart electronics product line for this fictional retail company. Now the retail company sells various product lines such as photography, smart electronics, home theater, and smart electronics includes products such as smart watches and fitness trackers and smart home devices. And recently sales haven't been doing that well. And the product manager would really like to understand our performance versus other product lines in the organization. And he also has a really limited budget to spend in our next round of marketing and needs to understand who to market with the next coupon campaign. Now, let's see if we can achieve this via a whistle stop tour of Cognos Analytics. And along the way, I'm going to point out new features so hopefully you can have a taste of how the product has continually evolved throughout the releases. Now, for the purposes of this demo, we've stored the data in a data module on DB2 Warehouse. And you can see this smart electronics data module. And it's got real-time data giving us customer loyalty and sales data from 2018 to 2021. So to start our analysis, let's just start adding some high-level KPIs to the dashboard. We can add an item such as quantity sold and another KPI such as number of customers. And straight away, we can see at a very top level in this data set, there are 65,535 customers, which equates to 194,337 items sold. Now that's great news from an organizational perspective, but now let's try and break this down by product line. And let's look at quantity sold by product line. So let's add these two items and simply pop them onto the dashboard here. And if we select them and add them to the and add them to the dashboard, we can see that Cognos has chosen the most appropriate visualization to represent this data, which is a column chart. And we can easily see in the middle column here that photography is sold the most. And worryingly for me, as the smart electronics product manager, smart electronics are selling pretty much the least. If you select photography here, you can see that they've sold 78,000 items with about 26,000 customers. Whereas of Smart Electronics has sold around 19,000 items with about 6,500 customers. And as you can see, dashboards are interacted by design. There's no coding here and it's really easy to filter the data by just simply selecting the columns. So let's adapt this column chart and let's add in an item called loyalty status to the visualization to better understand how our products are selling across our loyalty tiers. If we choose loyalty status, we can simply add it to the visualization in the guided data slots, such as color, length, or bars, or we can simply pop it onto the visualization and allow Cognos to determine the correct type. And in this instance, it's created a clustered column chart, and you can see the loyalty tiers along the bottom, such as bronze, elite, gold, platinum, silver, and VIP. And if you also notice how the smart title is updated to the data in the chart, so basically keeping up with our data exploration. And smart titles were introduced in 11.1.7 and the great thing about dashboards is that new features are introduced all the time. For instance, if you go to the column titles here, column title styling called style text has been introduced in 11.2.2 and you can change the font family, the style, the font size very simply there too. Cognos Analytics also provides analytic insights that help you detect and validate important relationships and meaningful difference based on the data that is presented in the visualization. And they're simply available by selecting the light bulb icon in the top right hand corner of most visualizations. And as you toggle these on, 
not only does it present you with an average value of sales, which is 6,478 across this data set, but it also finds meaningful differences in the data. And if you hold your mouse there, it will give you those in plain English. And it's telling us here that the value of quantity sold is unusually high when the combinations of loyalty status and product line are platinum and photography, bronze and home theatre, and VIP and photography. The value of these depends on the complexity of the data, and in this case, they confirm what we can see visually in the chart. But if there were other meaningful differences that were not quite so obvious, you'd be able to review them here as well. So what we're saying is we're not just really seeing pretty pictures here, we're getting insights which can really lead to pure business value. So let me toggle off insights, and let's go in and change the visualization type. And you can see with dashboards in recent releases, we've really made an effort to really make the interface much more easier to use. So for instance, we have properties and fields dot nicely on the right and filters dot with it too, which you can toggle on and off. But we've also got the on-demand toolbar now dot nicely in the top left-hand corner of the screen. And this gives you all the different options that you might have with each visualization. So for instance, if we select where it says column here, it's very easy to change the visualization. And we can change here from any of the recommended visualizations, such as column, stack column, heat map that is based on the, the, the data that is stored within that particular visualization. Or we can change it to any of the out of the box visualizations we have. And I think at this moment we have 35 or maybe 37 visualizations available to you. We've got simple visualizations such as bar or area or bubble visualizations, plus our advanced analytics such as decision tree and driver analysis. We've also got box plots and radar visualizations that were added in the more recent release of 11.2. Now for this visualization, I think we're gonna choose a packed bubble. I think that's a great way of representing this particular data set. So now onto location data and our database, as you can see here with the icons next to these data items, has geo data stored is latitude or longitude or city, country, province or state. So let's add latitude and longitude and maybe quantity sold. Control and click them and let's add them to the dashboard here in the bottom left quadrant. And as you can see, Congress straight away is going to default to a map box map visualization. In this resulting map, you can see gray data points for all the locations, but let's make this a little bit more vibrant by arranging some of the properties. So we select fields, and go to the latitude longitude layer then we can simply rearrange quantity sold and put it to point color and that looks much better with these turquoise uh, data points showing the high levels of quantity sold within that data set now if we go to focus mode we can see that in a little bit more detail and you can also see uh, some of the changes that we made to the product in terms of some of the new features so for instance if we go to properties in the latitude longitude layer we have this type for the for the for the data points At the moment it's set to none and it's just a, a standard circle with a heat map on it but you can change these to a heat so you can see the high uh, values of sales with these darker colors if we if we zoom in on europe you can see that a little bit better around the united kingdom there with these dark things and we've also can change it to what we call hex bin which is brand new to 11.2 uh, as well and here if you play around with the settings then you can get these three 3D hexagonal uh, sort of columns of data to show the sales in different areas as well. Also, you can use these in conjunction with the heat map. But also, which I think is great for this particular data set, is we can have a cluster. And a cluster show clusters of sales where there's overlapping data points. So if you zoom out to the top level, you can see that, okay, we've got 55 items in Europe, but as you zoom in, these clusters tend to break down. And it just gives a really succinct way of looking at that data set. So if you start going into the UK, you can see the clusters break down until they finally get to their individual data points. So I think that's a great way of representing this particular data set. And the great thing about maps is you can also add other data items. So let's, we're looking at quantity sold, but let's look at revenue as well. So I can particularly, I could just simply drop uh, revenue onto location color. And this time we can look at country or province and state and simply add that to the locations uh, drop zone there as well. And straight away we can see now this map with not only revenue but quantity sold on the same visualization. Let me get out of focus mode. And for the final part we're going to use the what we call the AI assistant. 
to continue our data discovery journey. Now, the, the AI Assistant is new to 11.1 .1 and is an embedded AI tool that really helps you gain quick insights into your data without having to be familiar with a data set. And you can start your journey simply by selecting help and it will guide you through your journey. But the AI Assistant has been further improved in recent releases, including 11.2.2, where temporal expressions have been added. So you can filter on time expressions such as Christmas Day or next week. And it also understands operators such as as, in, for, if. And in 11.2, we introduce support for data discovery using OLAP cubes, such as planning analytics, which makes it very versatile when using planning analytics and Cognos analytics together. So like I said, we could start by selecting help and it will guide you through your journey. So for instance, you can ask it to associate with a data set by selecting show data, or you can simply ask it to suggest questions based on the context of the data that we have open. For instance, these questions here are all based on the data set that we're using and we can simply select which order year has the top target revenue, for instance. And straight away, it produces a range of visualizations to answer that question. We've got a column chart, we've got a packed bubble chart, we've got box plots, we've got word clouds, we've got everything that we might think of, all answering the same question, which is revenue ordered by order year. Now, we can also ask our own questions of the data. So for instance, we could ask it a question such as, what influences, influences revenue? Select enter, and it will give us the fields that have a great influence of revenue in that data set. So for instance, quantity sold and country all have an influence on revenue in that data set. But what is also great is it's also produced what we call a Watson Insight. And under the covers, Watson is using its intent detection model to derive faster and more accurate answers to our questions. And if we just simply scroll down here section and learn why, then we can see that this Watson Insight has been produced because revenue and target revenue are part of an actual and planned group. And Watson thinks that you should know that revenue has deviated more than 20% from the planned field target revenue. And it's given us what we call a KPI visualization representing that insight. We can simply grab the title and drop it onto our dashboard in the top right hand corner. And if we resize it, we can see this KPI visualization is giving us great insight into our revenue figures. So it's saying at a top a top level on this data set that revenue of 109 million is up by 20.92%. Yet if we simply filter on something like smart electronics, we can see that revenue is actually down 31.72%. So this KPI visualization is a great way of represent representing a key KPIs such as revenue. So let's continue our journey. And we can go back to the AI assistant and at the bottom we can type something like um, we want to ask a question based on time series data and product line. So we can simply ask it a question is, what is quantity sold by product line? And you can see the type ahead functionality matching my question with the actual data model itself. And I can put an and in there and type order year. What is quantity sold by product line and order year? So we want to see sales over time. And straight away, it's produced as with this visualization, giving us a line chart showing quantity sold by order year colored by product line, which I can simply add to our visualization there. And if I want to see more granularity in that, because we've got the years along the bottom and the sales along the left-hand side and the different lines representing the different product lines, we can add some granularity to that visualization so we can change it. So we can simply add quarter this visualization and we could see a much more granular representation of that data. Now we're looking at, at using this for our planning budget and forecasting cycle and getting some insight into sales over time. So let's just filter this over the last couple of years. So I can go to fields, I can filter and I can simply select the last two years in terms of data point. We can see there a much more stable growth in sales over the over the last two years. You may have noticed Cognos has built in time series forecasting where you can quickly generate a sophisticated forecast on the fly. By toggling on this forecasting button, you see a number of different options. For instance, you see forecast periods, which is initially set to auto, which means it's going to choose 20% of the length of the data set. We can ignore last periods if we have an incomplete data set. We can also set confidence level and seasonality. 
so we can set some quite complex options for this forecast. Now if we go to the forecast that it's generated, we can see these data points have been forecasted. And if you want to see more details on what has been chosen, then you can open the data tray and you can see the forecast in statistical models and you can see which models it's chosen and why. So, forecasting. So let me open this in focus mode. Let me select Smart Electronics Data Point. And if you hang your mouse there, or simply hold the mouse, you can see the forecasted data point. And you can see that the confidence upper bounds, lower bounds, and the forecasted amount of 1,587 for quarter one, 2022. Excellent. So let's unfilter that. Let's go out of focus mode. And let's look at the entire data set. And we can close the AI assistant too. One thing I wanted to show you about the AI assistant, and it's the final thing of the AI assistant, and I can simply open it again, simply clear it using the reset button at the top. And one thing you can do with the AI assistant is simply create a dashboard directly from the data set. You simply type create dashboard, hit enter, and straight away it will produce a brand new dashboard with three tabs. It's a really useful feature this, especially when you've got a new data set that you don't want to you don't understand the, 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 the actual data itself and you just want to gain some insights into that data. And it will pick from three measures that it deems interesting to the, the user. So here it's chosen revenue, customer lifetime value and loyalty status. And it's got a range of different visualizations answering that question. So for instance, if we go to customer lifetime value, which is our measure in this data set representing customer loyalty and the revenue that they spend, then we can see that we've got a customer lifetime and revenue by order date. We've got a map showing it by postal code. And we've also got the driver analysis visualization in the bottom right hand corner. Now, this visualization really helps you understand what columns in the data drive customer lifetime value. So for instance, the colors of the bubbles represent the number of columns in the data that have an impact on customer lifetime value. Blue means one driver or one column in the data. Red means two columns or drivers and green being three or more. And it works from 0% on the left to 100% on the right. And that represents the predictive strength of those data columns on that metric. So for instance, if we select this bubble on the right hand side, which represents three columns, we can see that the combination of quantity sold, coupon response and province or state is a predictor of customer lifetime value with a predictive strength of 65%. Now that's really interesting because quantity sold is perhaps quite obvious, but it's interesting to see that there is a strong relationship with our promotional coupon campaign and it's encouraging to know that there is an impact. Let me just sum up this section of the demo. So if I go back to our original dashboard and go to the summary section, We've seen that using dashboards, we have viewed a highly visual summarized view of sales in our organization, showing poor performance of the smart electronics product line. We've reviewed automatic insights in visualizations and used geolocation data to visualize sales using map box maps. And we've used out of the box time series forecasting to determine sales are likely to continue as flat for smart electronics. And we've also used the AI assistant to help answer questions and surface insights by discovering that the customer lifetime value is influenced by quantity sold location and coupon response. Thank you for watching and please join me for the next section of the demo where I'll be investigating what drives customer lifetime value using our exploration capability.